sports scene with Greg Picaveros is now on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. This segment is brought to you by Linda Matney Art Gallery. Go by and see John Lee Matney and the great staff right there where art comes alive in Williamsburg. Always great exhibits, great shows, excellent website as well, lindamatneygallery.com. Give them a call at 757-675-6627. And of course, they are on Facebook, Linda Matney Gallery. Fine art, exquisite art. Don't let art vanish in Williamsburg. Excellent music in the background, great entertainment right there at Linda Matney Art Gallery, 5435 Richmond Road. Browse, shop, visit in Williamsburg at the Linda Matney Art Gallery. Now it's time for Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris. Here's your host, Greg Bicavaris. And welcome to Sports Scene right here, our July edition. Greg Bicavaris with you. Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris is on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. Our interview show monthly right here, produced and powered by Odyssey. It's a pleasure to talk to Chip Tarkington, who's worked for ABC Sports, Channel 8 in Richmond, done a plethora of play-by-play and even color commentary on TV and radio. Chip, how are you, my friend? Can't be any better, Greg. How are you? Very good, very good, very good. Hope you're enjoying your summer. Let's get right to it. Uh, you know, college football season is right around the corner for Virginia and Virginia Tech. Both teams struggled in 2022. What do you expect this year? Wow, you know, with all the NIL and transfer portals and coaches just trying desperately to get recruits in, a lot of freshmen may have to start playing for everybody. I really don't know that I've got a great feel just yet. I think we'll have to get into some of the fall practice sessions Kind of get an idea then. I think the teams will be easy to easier to pick a little bit once we know who's going to be playing. Because you know you may have three or four folks right now that got a chance to play. Yeah, and of course you were very involved with Old Dominion football last year, and of course they started off by beating Virginia Tech, but it was a very disappointing 2022 and a lot of expectations this year. But as you know, they start off with Virginia Tech again. Yeah, this time on the road that'll be a tough start. And for Old Dominion last year, a lot of injuries. It just came up at the wrong time and had some trouble with the quarterback play. I think the offense had changed enough to where it was a little difficult for the quarterback to kind of make everything work like they wanted him to. And so difficult going into the Sun Belt too. The Sun Belt Conference is a very good football conference. And I think folks found that out last year all across the board. Look at all the teams that played Sun Belt teams that didn't, didn't fare very well. Yeah, talking to Chip Tarkington right here. And Chip, but one team that did fare very well was James Madison. They made the transition very well. Tell you what, James Madison had an outstanding football team. They came to Old Dominion and, and really showed a, a lot of composure, great athletes, well coached. Uh, that was an outstanding football team to watch last year. Of course, uh, Richmond's usually pretty solid, but uh, every year is different. Attrition. Coaching changes, players transfer, but you hit it on the nose, especially with basketball, can really affect the team. Football's got a lot more players, but the NIL, you know, the transfer portal, uh, you know, I'm not so sure on the NIL how well that's worked out. Well, I, I'm not a fan, and I don't know everyone, that, or I don't know a lot of people that are big fans of it because it's, it's very difficult. And, and if you talk to those in the NFL, they will say, you know, at least you have a contract with the NFL, so you, you have to stay for some period of time, whereas in college now, you don't have to stay for any period of time. You can go one year, you don't even have to go the whole year, and you can transfer. And, you know, that makes it very difficult for college coaches, for college athletics, for fans as well. So I'm not certain that uh, if it stays in its current situation that it will last that long because it will really, really cause some, some, some headaches for all of the college athletes and all the college football programs. Yeah, I think it's really causing a lot of headaches for everybody. The transfer portal with head coaches, there's no consistency. There's no four-year players, except for the fellow at North Carolina who decided to stay for four years, Baycott. That was really impressive. Impressive, to say the least. He's, he's an outstanding young man. Of course, you know, he played in Richmond at uh, Trinity High School and just an outstanding young person. And so uh, I was not surprised by that, but uh, there's going to be very few of those, I think, going forward because the, the deals, quote, quote, are just too sweet to pass up. It really is. Talking to Chip Targenton, who's worked for ABC Sports and, of course, uh, Channel 8 for decades in Richmond, done play-by-play. We work together as well in production of various sporting events for the ESPN family as well. 
Rough day last week for ESPN. It just shows you, Chip, and you're a good example of that, and I try to follow the same path. You have to do a lot of things in this business. You can't just say, I'm going to be a DJ in the morning and be there forever, or I'm going to be doing, you know, anchoring for a certain network, because we found out uh, recently at ESPN that everybody could go, no matter whether you've been there for one day or for decades. And that's really become the case. And, and, uh, you know, I've always told folks I always like to reinvent myself, whatever it might be. And that included in, in anything with broadcasting, to just be able to do some different things and to move around and, and work with some different groups. And, and I, I think it's been good for me. Uh, you, you don't just get tied to one group and, and, and you bounce around some. And that, that's kind of a joy when you get to work with different people, which expands your group and expands those folks that you you get to know and get to meet and have the opportunity to work with right i always remember my dad saying branch out of sports you know so whether i do commercials or whatever i remember that philosophy and it kind of is ingrained and my mom always said don't be a spectator just don't watch everybody else do something do something yourself (laughs) you know when i was a kid it's true we you don't want to go through life i know you're a christian just being a spectator and watching life go by well, no, you need to be in the game, whatever the game may be. And, and I think that's part of the fun part of it, again, is that having an opportunity to work for different groups with different people, you make different friends. And a lot of the times you circle back around and, bam, there you are working again. It could be 10, 15, 20 years later. And that's kind of fun, too, to have that, that circle of, of television, so to speak. Yeah, we hope everybody bounces back that did lose their job, but you could see it coming, Chip. Let's go back to circa back 1995 in a Virginia, Virginia Tech press room that Rich Murray was leading the SID, formerly at UVA, was traditional media there, print, broadcast, magazines, radio. You'd have your TV booth lit up. You'd have the radio for both teams. Now, go to 2023, social media, there's podcasts, YouTube, everybody's got some type of platform that's not even in broadcasting. And I think all this, you know, Hulu, Netflix, you know, ESPN plus, whatever, even themselves are a victim of their own, uh, you know, gratitude there because there's so many different platforms to consume content now, as opposed to, let's say down here, channel three, 10 and 13, or up in Richmond, channel six, channel eight and channel 12. Well, you're absolutely right, and and I knew this was coming many, many years ago when ESPN was exploring with the stream situation and if they were going to be able to stream games, and I was one of the folks who had the opportunity to do games with them, and we went to Maryland, we went to Wake Forest, we went to UVA, went to a lot of different schools, and the feedback that I gave them was, this is, this is the goose that ate the canary, because everybody can sit at home and watch multiple games at one time because all you got to do is is switch to each one. And it has always been, I think, a wonderful opportunity for folks to see more than one game at a time. Now, it it does come back to kind of bite you on the other side because, you know, you may lose some of your audience if somebody finds a different game or one that may be more exciting at some point. So it always can come back to bite you in that way. But, But I still think for the fan and for the consumer, it's, it's, it's really a great thing. You can sit at home, and like I said, you can watch 10, 15, 20 games almost at one time. Yeah, nothing like that in the winter. September and October, you kind of want to be at the stadium. But, you know, people's time is precious, you know, the holidays, whatever, coming up in the late fall. But uh, you're exactly right. I think stadiums, especially the NFL stadiums that I've been to, they're trying to make it more technical friendly for people that have apps and phones and whatever. You can't necessarily bring a laptop with you there, but you can bring your phone and people are watching other games while they're at the game. That always kind of baffles me, Chip. You're spending big money to go to a game, but you're not even watching the game where you're at. And that it's definitely obvious in basketball where it's front and center. Well, the, the, the funny thing about that is you're probably watching a team that your team is going to play or a team that's in your conference or whoever it might be. And you're trying to keep up with what they're doing as much as what your team is doing, which has changed the, the viewing habits in many ways. But it is kind of another little neat thing that you can do just by having the phone and being able to have the access to, to watch a game on the phone while you're at a game. Yep, this is Chip Tarkington talking, Greg Bicaveras interviewing him on Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Glad you're with us for our monthly podcast all over social media and powered by the great Odyssey and the Odyssey app as well. And Chip, you're right. I mean, attendance has been affected by all these phones and computers and apps. People just don't want to make the effort. I call it make the effort 
matched energy to attend a game, and it takes time. All of a sudden, a student might look at it and say, well, it's three hours. I'll get the score later. You couldn't have done that 20 or 30 years ago. Well, absolutely not. And, and you look at baseball, how they've made changes to the game there, and I think everybody is, is looking for that uh, that golden opportunity of how can we get folks to come back into some of the games or how can we make it a better experience for the fans? You hear the words fan experience all the time. So I think that will continue to be the, the way the thing goes right now, because that, that is a big, big part. Uh, you, know, you, you go to some of these games and they're throwing t-shirts and, and anything they can to just get your body there. They want you there so that you can physically be there and be a part of what takes place. Yeah. You're engaged. And, uh, you know, they want you to be engaged. Bas- basketball is a lot easier because there's a lot smaller crowd there. But um, what about the state of Virginia, Chip? You've been involved. You were an anchor for years at Channel 8 in Richmond. It used to be a very good golf tournament down in my neck of the woods. You know, the Anheuser-Busch at Kings Mill, the men's tournament was there from 81 to 02. Curtis Strange, who lived here, never won the tournament. The women came here. They've been idle for two years, and uh, they played in 2021. They did not play in 2020. It just shows you how difficult sponsorship is for an established tournament like that that would normally be playing in the spring or the summer. They can't play, and the the women called it the fifth major. Yeah, a lot has changed with different venues, and a lot of places we talk about golf first, a lot of clubs and a lot of uh, public courses have created these wonderful golf courses that are set up for tournaments and they're created in that venue and that idea. And that makes it a little easier to move some of these tournaments and to go somewhere. Maybe it becomes a destination vacation for a lot of folks. And they make that trip to go see something like that rather than, well, it's just down the road. And I think rotation for, for golf, especially to go to some different places, is always a positive because they have an opportunity to, to have folks go to new places. And I, I, I like that. I think that's really good going forward. You know, you never want to see the, the British Open or the U.S. Open or the PGA go back to the same place every year. But at Augusta with the Masters, you know, you wouldn't want it to be anywhere else. So that's that other side of that. Some places are, are just not going to be changed. But every sport has done that. With Super Bowls, with NCAA basketball championships, they rotate it around. I think it's to give folks also an opportunity, if you live in those areas, to have a chance to get to see some of those events. You know, I've been to the U.S. Open when Hale Irwin won. I was working as a runner for ABC Sports back then, way back in 1990 at Medina. But I'll say this, my favorite professional golf tournament was the Kingsmill one, you know, during the summer when the men were playing. It was my favorite professional golf tournament. Event, you know the amenities at Kings Mill, not quite the same though as it used to be. No, and it, but it was always hot as blazes. <laughs> that was always yeah. the hottest week of the year when they played at Kings Mill. But it, it was a great event, and and I think when the ladies came in, they had good numbers, good ratings, and a lot of folks showed up. So it is hard though to keep those tournaments year in and year out because it's it's difficult to prepare for those events every year. Yeah, finally, uh, Chip. Of course, you're related to Fran Tarkenton, who played primarily for the Vikings, but he also played for the Giants as well, I believe, correct? Yep, absolutely. How come back then the players were playing forever? Him, Jim Hart, even Norm Sneed from down here, He his last year was 1976. I mean, he played a long time. You know, Billy Kilmer, Sonny Jurgensen, those guys, even, uh, you know, Jaworski and Roman Gabriel. It seemed like it was normal. Bob Greasy played for decades as well. But now you don't see that longevity unless you're a, a Roethlisberger or a Tom Brady. It's almost like an exception rather than the rule. Well, a couple of things have changed. First of all, you've got more games in a season, so there's more opportunity for injury, and that happens. But the bigger issue is the money. The money is so great, and they jump in, and they can do more sponsorships now. Uh, Fran, I don't think, ever made $300,000 in a season play. Mm. And if you compare that to today's salaries, it's kind of staggering, but that's the bigger difference. You had to you had to keep going, and you had to have a lot of times jobs on the on the side and after the season, and that was the only way you could you know really make a, a lot of money. That's not the case anymore. And these athletes playing today, very fortunately, they they really don't have to do anything but play their sport. You know, they'd still do commercial work and so forth like that, but they don't have to necessarily because they make good money. Yeah, I like what Peyton Manning does. Works a few games uh, in the alternative broadcast, but primarily does commercials and other business. So I don't think – I think he's a good example 
for Tom Brady that he doesn't want to commit to a full season of being on the road and grinding. I, he does it from the comfort of his own home. So I'm still wondering if Brady will commit to a full season. So far, he's backed out a few years. So we'll see. Yeah, it'd be interesting. And, and, you know, the life going on the road to do games and be a part of broadcast is uh, not always as easy or as much fun as everybody thinks just because of the travel. And that's great to do the games. And for those hours that it's game time, it's sensational. But there's a lot of other things that go into each week preparing and, uh, and going to the games, going to the sites, meeting with the coaches, talking to players. There's a lot more to it than just show and go, as I used to call it. Yeah, it's a lot of before and after. Chip, thank you for being with us on the road. I know it's not easy being on the road yourself, even whether you're uh, travel or business, but uh, you're a real pro. You're a friend. I've worked with you before, and great to stay in touch and great to hear your voice. Greg, thanks. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day. You too. All right, Chip talking to you right there, formerly of Channel 8 in Richmond and ABC Sports. Sports scene will continue after this. Mi Hogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mi Hogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual and comfortable atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mi Hogar is located at 4201 Granby Street and is a tradition in Norfolk. Call 640-7705 and log on to MiHogarMexicanRestaurant.com. At Mi Hogar, there's something for everyone. Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville and Virginia Beach open daily for lunch and dinner. Mike and the staff will take good care of you. Burgers, steaks, salads, appetizers, desserts, and much more. Great atmosphere, nice bar, spacious dining room. 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. Thank you for listening to Sports Scene. Always great to connect at Greg Bick on YouTube. That's G-R-E-G-B-I-C. Subscribe. Also, Greg Bick on Twitter as well. For more, go to gjbtv.com, hrsmhof.com, and hamptonroadsonlinemall.com. Also, connect with me on LinkedIn, Greg Bicavaris, and also Facebook, Greg Bicavaris as well. Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris is on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. Thank you. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, open in Yorktown. Go by and see Paul and his wonderful staff. High quality chicken fingers, fries, coleslaw, Texas toast. It is delicious. The great chicken sandwich, cane sauce, a kid's menu, refreshing beverages, tailgates. They've got it all. Follow Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers on social media. They are open daily. Portions of this program were previously recorded. Sports Scene with Greg Picaveras is now on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. And welcome back to our second segment of Sports Scene. Sports Scene with Greg Picaveras, powered by Odyssey and the Odyssey app on odyssey.com. Our monthly featured guest, George McLean from the Marksman in Newport News. George, how are you? Uh, doing well. Sweating a lot these days. Uh, hope you're doing good, too. Today, actually, is a really nice day outside. I can't believe it. In the 80s, it actually feels like it's cool. Uh, yeah, compared to the last couple of days, you're exactly right. <laughs> All right. Before we talk about the store, uh, it just continues, George. The mass shootings continue. It just happened in Philadelphia here recently. It just shows you, I mean, obviously, good things do not happen at night. I'm, I'm a firm believer. But we've seen that good things don't happen during the day either sometimes. You have to be more vigilant. Well, that's that's very true, uh, especially now. It looks like you get, you, anytime you have a, a group of folks together, uh, vigilant is a key word. You, know, you got to uh, be on your toes. And I think for a lot of people, they're just staying away from those crowds. And to be honest, in, in, in light of uh, uh, your recent events, I think that's probably the best policy. But you know, if you don't need to be someplace or go there, don't. You know, that's, that's kind of probably the, you know, the safest place you have is in your home or in your yard. You know, find something closer to do. But these these group uh, gatherings. Uh, I've not been to one in years and don't intend to go in the, in the near future well, uh, you know, just just because of, of all the stuff that's going on. But if you happen to be out there, uh, yes, you need to be vigilant. Uh, you know, Keep your head on the swivel and see what's going on. You know, it's almost like going to a function, let's say one of your friends invites you, but everybody there is somebody you don't know. You don't know what you're walking into, the conversation. That can be awkward. All right, let's multiply that by thousands Good example, I was at the Tides game on Sunday because I wanted to see the fireworks. But the key was Sunday, two days before July the 4th, we were relaxing, sitting in the stands, in the comfort of our own chair with a with a beverage, 
and maybe some dessert, just watching the fireworks. It was great. We didn't have to say, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, you know, push the crowd, whatever. But the fireworks right by your house, George, we won't mention where your house is, but you know where I'm talking about, not too far from the beach. Uh, It's very few places to enter and exit down there. There's little parking, and that's just a a menu for everything that can go wrong when you're crowded with that many people in a hot environment waiting to see a few fireworks. Well, fortunately for me, I can see all that stuff from my my yard. Sure. (laughs) You know, I I don't go out, but yes, I, I, I understand what you're saying. And you know, a lot of these places, uh, you know, they're making you park, you know, quite a ways away. And I'm talking up to a mile, and I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm getting too old for stuff like that. So especially with you know the heat, the, the way it's been, but no one wants to walk that kind of distance. And then you don't know what's going to happen between you know leaving your car and getting to the to the venue that you're you're going to, and it, it just again uh, quadruples the the amount of. Uh, vigilance that you really have to stay on top of because not only now are you concerned about folks the big crowd at the venue but you know you've got all kinds of you know people that just uh i, I don't know they're, they're they don't seem to be good good folks that weren't raised right or something's going on that they just want to instill terror and people they see walking along the side of the road uh throwing things out the window uh or worse yet uh, you know uh kidnapping somebody not that that's happened here, but obviously that's a possibility. It's, again, you've got to consider all of those factors when you take these kinds of actions these days. Yeah, the summertime right now, a lot of moving parts, a lot of people in the area that don't necessarily live in the area, and you can't be naive and say it's summer, I'm going to let my guard down and just say I'm going to be okay. Well, like you said, there were a lot of people who had to walk a mile. You know, They still were hungry and thirsty. They Their shirt was destroyed because of the sweat. And really, you, how much can you enjoy yourself? That's why I went to a baseball game, sat in the stands, saw the fireworks two days before it happened. I was just as happy because Monday it rained. So anyway, yep. moving moving on. But, you know, sometimes convenience is good, you know, and when you put yourself out there as well. You don't want to be dealing with apex predators, you know, just trying to walk to a, a fireworks or a game. George's uh, location is at 520 Industrial Park Drive in Newport News. Seven five seven eight seven two forty one thirty. Google the Marksman, and of course, uh, great updates on Facebook as well. And that's where all the uh, updates usually go. George, yeah, the, the the fastest ones because we we can do it instantaneously on on Facebook to where to update the the website. Those of you who are website designers, you know, it's a little bit more involved, a little bit more time and uh, consuming. Uh, and sometimes when we want to get you know, a, a word out, whatever it is. Uh, more quickly, it's it's just simply easier to do it on our, our Facebook page. And the Marksman's got gift cards year-round. You can get a gift card for any special occasion, birthdays, holidays, you know, all types of uh, events going on. It's great. And of course, browse, shop, and visit the Marksman. It's a lot more than just a shooting range, George. Of course, you got the staff there. You've got accessories. Do you, ta- you have a f- full uh, advanced um, building there with a lot of good stuff in. Well, we, we, we do, and, and the whole uh, idea behind the business was to stay diversified and become diversified to where we've got the shooting range, we've got the retail section, uh, which is, you know, firearms, ammunition, shooting accessories, uh, you know, holsters, belts, all that kind of stuff that you would want. And we also uh, are a, uh, a DCJS, a Virginia DCJS, which is the Department of Criminal Justice Services, uh, certified uh, training facility where we train, you know, security guards, private investigators, all that uh, the kind of thing where you know, Virginia requires an individual to have a, a permit or a license. We are certified by the state to provide that, that training. And then we also do, you know, concealed carry uh, training uh, for private individuals. So if you want to, you know, carry your firearm concealed, which is the better way to do it, uh, you need to, uh, you know, take a class and then get your paperwork in and get your, your permit. So we provide all that training. The marksman right there is in Newport News excellent establishment to learn every day and also help someone with proper firearm safety as well. And really, too, my producer and I, Ken, we like to watch these videos and different uh, videos on YouTube. You can learn a lot. But the same thing with your store is you're training these security guards as well and also for the safety of your staff and your patrons in there. 
when a police officer says, show me your hands, stop resisting, get out of my car, how difficult is that for people to know on the road? And especially for the tourists listening as well, when you're pulled over by a police officer and he asks you to show your ID, he's working with you right there. But when you resist, when you show defiance, that's not good. And then you might not be in a place where you want to be that evening. Well, that's very true, and we try to get that point across to everyone that, that comes you know, through here, that if, if you get stopped, do what you're told. Even if it's wrong on the police officer's uh, part, that is not the place to challenge the police officer. You're, you're the place to properly challenge that police officer is in court. Take your summons, your ticket, what, what, whatever it's being issued for, and you challenge that in a court in front of a judge. You do not do it on the side of the of the road or even at your front door if something has happened and the police officer is there. They've got to follow the law, but again, that's not the point. That's not the place to challenge. Do it in court. That's, that's the safe place. You're not going to get hurt. You're not you know, challenging that police officer. You do what you're instructed to do, and then you uh, confront them later if there are irregularities. Because uh, like one Virginia State police officer told me, the street is their office. And, you know, you got cars flying by 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. It's not safe. And they only have limited time. And when they say, get out of the car, show me your hands, whatever, please just do it, folks. Uh, You've seen a lot of accidents happen because they don't do the simple things. On a personal note, uh, your son BJ worked for you for a long time. How's he doing? Well, he's doing very well. He's uh, looking at a possibility of relocating uh, with, with a, the same agency that he's with, but just a, a different different section. So, uh, and they just had uh, their kid uh, number five, which uh, is my seventh uh, grandchild. Uh, so they're looking forward to uh, to great things. Uh, he's doing very well. Uh, he's he's done well and uh, continuing to you know, progress in that field. So uh, very very proud of the moves that he has uh, he's made. He's almost ready to start a sitcom with five kids there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And how about Sherry? She's really the glue that holds the store together. Uh, yeah, I, it'd be uh, you know difficult for me to deal you know, to do some of the things that I'm doing without her here. Uh, you know the, the glue, like you say, it's holding uh, everything together. But she's uh, she does an excellent job, uh, very you know customer uh, friendly, and and that's our our big push with all of our employees, is that you treat you know the customers the way you want to be treated, you know. And but I will in the, you know, there's always someone that wants to come in and you know challenge us you know uh, uh, in here, and we just had a recent uh, deal. Matter of fact, uh, the guy gave us a a bad review. Someone who had no firearm experience at all wanted to come in and you know rent one of our firearms to go on on the range. And when we asked them, uh, what's well, a standard procedure for us? <clears throat> Do you have any you know uh, firearms uh, experience? And when the guy says no, well we can't let you on. We, you know we just can't let anyone on the range that has no experience. The other people that's on the range expect us to do our due diligence and that type of thing and keep them safe. They don't want the, uh, a, a, a new person going out there that has no handgun experience at all. And to the point that when they say no experience, they don't know necessarily to keep that firearm pointed down range. And they load it up. They keep you know, the fingers on the trigger, which is never supposed to be until you're sighted on your target down range and you intend to fire. Only then do you put your finger on the trigger and someone gets shot you know, on the range because we didn't uh, ask the right questions up front. And so when we told this individual, we can't let you on the range because you don't have any experience, then they they got mad, went out in the parking lot, you know, wrote a nasty review right there on on, on the spot, uh, said we were belligerent and da-da-da. And, you know, people, you have to understand that this is a business where safety is number one. It should be number one in your mind. And it is number one in, in our minds, and we will not let someone on the range with no firearm experience. We'll be glad to schedule you an appointment with the instructor, but then, you know, and, and the guy came back in and wanted to do that, but our instructors are already busy at that time with other students. He got mad again. So, you know, you're going to have, you know, we, we just know it's just part of the business, you're going to have people to come in and they expect everything right when they want it. And it just, you know, unfortunate as that is, it, it can't always happen right when you want it. We've got other customers that we have to take care of. 
And it's kind of, I will schedule you an appointment. It's not going to be today or right this instant because the instructors are, are already scheduled with other students. So we ask folks, you know, keep an open mind when you come in. If you don't have any experience, know what's going to happen. Get with, you know, one of the counter folks so we can get you scheduled with an instructor and we can keep everybody's egos at a low level and get you the proper instruction. And then you're free to go on the range and shoot to your heart's content. But we want you to be safe. Yeah, and safe for the staff and the patrons as well. And, of course, folks, remember, George does train security guards there at the Marksman. And it's not just security guards at banks or sporting events or venues. It's also for churches these days, too. Just I tell you, George, when you have your back to something, it's never an easy feeling. No, uh, not anymore. I mean, it, it kind of used to be, unless your name was Wild Bill Hiccup. And, you know, he, he found that out the hard way as well. Uh, but, yeah, there's there's a lot to be said about sitting with your back, you know, to the wall. So at least you have a full field of view as what's happening in front of you. And a lot of people are doing that. Very good. George, all the best. We look forward to talking to you in August. You stay cool. The Marksman's at 520 Industrial Park Drive in Newport News, a true treasure on the peninsula. George, thank you, my friend. You take care. Have a good summer. Oh Yummy Sushi Japanese Restaurant in Kemp's River is open and ready to serve you. Featuring an all-you-can-eat experience with signature dishes from the kitchen and fresh sushi prepared for you. Oh Yummy Sushi is open for lunch and dinner daily with dine-in, carry-out, as well as DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. Located at 1255 Fordham Drive at the Kemp's River Crossing. Call 937-2011 for Oh Yummy Sushi, the best sushi in Hampton Roads. A tradition of excellence for over 50 years is the Aberdeen Barn Steakhouse in Virginia Beach. Start your experience off with she crab soup, an assortment of appetizers such as the fried oyster, Rockefeller, crispy calamari, just to name a few. Aberdeen Barn has the finest premium steaks, prime rib, grilled tomahawk ribeye, seafood, chicken, pasta dishes, and live music in a most pleasing atmosphere. Open daily. Visit them at 5805 Northampton Boulevard in Virginia Beach. Call 464-1580 and log on to Aberdeen Barn Net. Sakura Japanese Restaurant in Chesapeake is your destination for excellent Japanese food featuring fresh sushi and hot dishes prepared in the kitchen for lunch and dinner. Sakura is located at 1437 Sam's Drive at the Walmart Way Crossing. Oh Yummy Sushi is at the Renaissance Place at 401 North Great Neck Road in Virginia Beach. Both Sakura in Chesapeake and Oh Yummy Sushi in Virginia Beach are available with DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Pickup. Tasty Japanese food the way you want it is at Sakura and Oh Yummy Sushi. Sushi. So, ah! what's Greg's problem? I'm very mad! God, I'm so mad right now! I know you're mad. I know you're upset. It's time for what tees Greg off. <laughs> what tees me off always a great segment. Uh, for more, go to gjbtv.com. Ken, going to a gathering, let's say invited by an ex-friend or a, even a friend, and it's a small gathering, about five or six people. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Right. You know, and of course, everybody there is drinking and smoking. They all work at the same job. The only thing I have in common with any of them is I knew my ex that was there. And of course, it can be really awkward because no matter what you say, it just might not come out right, whether you're saying it or hearing it. I hear that. Definitely, we all grew up with cash, whether it's check, cash, credit card, debit card, whatever you pay online. You go to a place, I'm just going to say this, it's a big amusement park in Williamsburg, and all they take (laughs) is credit card. I'm sorry, that's thousands of people moving in and out of your place every day, parking, eating, admission. And you're denying, you know, cash. It's like they're saying they don't want your money. Right. Keep your money. Yeah, and even uh, certain sporting venues, they only take credit cards. Well, that's fine. I've got a credit card. I have no problem with it. But some people do have a problem with it. The message I get is that they don't trust the people who work for them. Yes. Getting distracted on the road, Ken, you know, when you're driving, then you see one person having, you know, using their phone or lounging like they're in their backseat of their car, that can affect traffic for miles. Oh, yeah, or putting on makeup. What about you, Kenny? I never put makeup on in the car. Okay, I hope not. Self-storage facilities. What a racket. Once you get stuff in, you can't get it out. Yeah. Automatic gratuities at restaurants. The word gratuity means gratitude. And as soon as you make that mandatory, it loses all its meaning. It's not just that, Kenny, but... 
you get the tip based on your performance. Don't do an automatic 20% tip if you've done nothing but cop an attitude. If you're too cheap to pay your staff, pay your staff more. Right. Talking to customer service, any customer service on the telephone, and whether they help you or not, they end the call with, is there anything else I can help you with today, Mr. Bicaveras? Mm. Well, other than dialing eight, dialing nine to get through and then waiting another 20 minutes ah. and then saying you can do this online. I already know that. I do enough online. I'm calling the operator to speak to a person. When they say anything else, that implies that they did something previously. And then they want a survey. I feel, I don't fill out surveys that often. <laughs> no, no. Can people that hold their phone like in their hand like a pancake and are walking aimlessly like their life depends on what's going on their phone <laughs> as opposed to looking on the road, seeing a car, or bumping into a person without, uh, you know, being expressionless. I always get worried because it looks like they're looking at a Geiger counter. I'm wondering how much radiation is in the room. It looks like a flat pizza they're holding or a, or a baby. <laughs> Hi, this is Greg Bickavaris, inviting you to listen to my podcast, Sports Scene, by going to YouTube and typing Greg Bick. That's G-R-E-G-B-I-C. Sports Scene is an informative interview show featuring local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests. We do a fun segment called What Tees Me Off as well. For more, log on to gjbtv.com, subscribe to Greg Bick on YouTube, and follow me on Twitter at Greg Bick. Sports Scene with Greg Bick of Aris is on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. I want to thank our guests today, Chip Tarkington and George McLean. For more, go to gjbtv.com. And thank you for listening to the July edition of Sports Scene, powered by Odyssey. Sports Scene with Greg Bickavaris is on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. For Ken Carson, I'm Greg Bickavaris. Thanks for listening to our July show, and we'll talk to you soon. You've been listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bickavaris. 